All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. This is Mitch Bishop. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at .NET Nuke. Uh, we have a very interesting case study for, for, you, for everybody today, um, another in a series of web seminars from .NET Nuke. Um, this time we've got uh, Steve Braper, who is the Regional Director of Communications for Northern Health which is a regional health authority in, the, uh, in Canada, British Columbia. And uh, he's got a very interesting story to tell about how they've utilized .NET Nuke to provide uh, enhanced healthcare services for a very large geographic area of Canada. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to make sure that everybody can, um, can hear us and see us. So uh, if you can do us a favor and use uh, your control panel on the right, the GoToWebinar control panel, there's a little hand uh, that you can click on. If you can raise your hand, if you can hear us, that would be great. Hey, I apologize, everybody. Uh, we have a little technical difficulty, but that's why we ask these questions at the beginning. Uh, let me start over a little bit. Um, this is Mitch Bishop. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at .NET Nuke. Uh, we're very excited today to have with us Steve Raper, who is the Regional Director of Communications for Northern Health. And um, they've got a fantastic .NET new case study story to go through. And um, uh, it's a great story about how they utilize .NET new to really address the healthcare needs of a large geographic area. But I won't steal his thunder too much. Um, we um, had a little technical difficulty, I think, with the audio, but um, just to make sure, if uh, everybody could look on their uh, control panel for, for GoToWebinar, there's a little button you can click on to raise your hand. If you could raise your hand, if you can hear us, that would be awesome. That's much better. <laughs> uh, I apologize for the technical difficulties, but I think we're through those. Um, and the other thing is I want to make sure everybody can see my screen. So if you uh, can see my screen, raise your hand again. That, that would be most appreciated. It, great. It looks like um, most of you can see the screen. Just a reminder about the GoToWebinar platform. There is a little questions panel on the platform. Feel free to ask questions at any time. We, we will have plenty of time at the end of the uh, slides to take on questions from the audience. I'll be asking some questions of Steve and his team as well. Uh, but um, as you think of those questions, make sure to type them in and, and let us know, and we'll tee those up for later. Before we get to Steve, we've got um, a few hundred people on the line, and uh, some of them are not that familiar with .NET Nuke. So let me take five minutes and talk to you about .NET Nuke and introduce you to the company and the product. Um, we talk to hundreds and hundreds of companies every year. Um, the one common theme that we run across um, in talking to companies is that they struggle with this concept of agility, doing things faster, doing things affordably, growing their businesses and scaling them in a, um, an affordable way, and um, also responding to the unpredictable change that's happening on the web right now. Um, if you had to predict the social revolution on the web back in 2000, I think it would have been di difficult to predict. So here we sit in 2012, really uh, trying to predict what's going to happen on the web in the next few years. And um, it's just as hard and just as difficult to predict. So what we're encouraging our customers and clients to think about is making the right platform decision that allows you to adapt quickly to that unpredictable change on the web. And so at .NET Nuke, uh, we're a software company. We um, have a web content management system with a bunch of really cool capabilities around the outside that gives our customers the ability to adapt quickly, to uh, move fast, and take advantage of new opportunities for your online presence. And for most companies, their online presence is their most important business asset next to their people. And you want to make sure that your online presence your web presence is relevant, up-to-date, and in touch. A little bit about the company. Um, we are the world's number one web content management system in the Microsoft ecosystem. We've um, 
we're just about to take over 2,000 commercial customers, actually. Um, it started out, the company started out as an open source project back in 2002. And uh, because of the 7 million downloads that we've gotten over the years, we are by far the largest, most successful open source project in Microsoft history. Uh, we started selling our commercial editions of our products in 2009. Uh, that's been a high growth business for us. And as a result, we were very pleased to make the 2011 Inc. 500 list. In fact, we were the ninth fastest growing company in the Bay Area. Uh, we, uh, because of the open source nature of our business, and we continue to have an open source free version of our product, there are over 700,000 websites on the planet that are powered by .NET Nuke. We get about 80,000 downloads a month of our free version today. Uh, three years ago, we, we purchased an online marketplace, which is now called the .NET Nuke Store. And there are thousands of commercial, commercially available uh, modules, extensions, and designs in the store, which makes building a, a website really fast and affordable for many of our customers. And last, last but not least, we've got a very large and strong community that has built up over the years of folks that have learned .NET Nuke and contribute to the open source project. So um, .NET Nuke really is the hub of your most important business asset. At its core is a CMS, a content management system, but also uh, built around the edges we've got um, strong capabilities in document management, workflow, permission, security. Um, we did a major release around mobile for adaptive uh, and, and reactive mobile site design. Uh, we did that last year. Um, the platform's cloud ready. You can not only host it anywhere you'd like, but you can create a scheme where documents and files are served up to your site from uh, either your local server or from uh, AWS or Microsoft Azure. If you don't find what you need in our platform, you can certainly go to the store and probably find it there. Again, there are thousands of apps available on the store. And if uh, you still don't find what you need or you need to create something custom, um, the platform is extremely extensible uh, for, um, for developers to create their own custom modules. Um, being the marketing guy, this is a requirement that we have a slide full of logos. Um, there are, again, about just about 2,000 commercial customers for .NET Nuke out there that span all industries across the globe. Really interesting stories. Um, Northern Health is definitely one of them. Um, but if you go to our site, you, there's a library of customer case studies there that might be of interest to you. So I encourage you to do that. Last month, we did a comprehensive survey of our customers. And um, we had some very interesting results. Uh, we did it through an independent third party called Tech Validate. And uh, they validated um, some very interesting ROI results from our customers. 95% of them said that they improved their efficiency using .NET Nuke, both uh, internal IT efficiency as well as the efficiency of their content owners. And 94% of them said that .NET Nuke helped them save time and money, also very um, appropriate these days. And um, at the end of the day, people use .NET Nuke because not only do they save time and money, but they can get to market a lot faster. In fact, 81% of the customer survey said they just were able to deliver faster with .NET Nuke versus using another solution. So um, there's a URL on your screen right now which has a complete library of this whole uh, survey results. I encourage you again to, um, to go um, look at the, the entire library. There's some cool stuff in there. Um, some of you are asking a question, will you get these slides? And the answer is yes. We'll go ahead and send the, the slides out afterwards. So you don't need to worry about writing down this long URL. Um, and just to finish up, um, .NET New comes in three editions, our free community edition, our professional edition, and our Enterprise Edition. And uh, there are different capabilities in each. I encourage you to come to our website, look at the product comparison page, and uh, you, that'll give you um, a first look at what's included with each edition. So uh, with that, 
I would like to introduce Steve Raper. He is the Regional Director of Communication for Northern Health. And um, turn it over to him. He's got a short set of slides. And at the end of the slides, uh, Steve and I will have a conversation and we'll take questions from the audience. Steve? Uh, good, good morning. Um, and, and thanks to uh, all those people out there that are attending. And hopefully uh, you'll all find some, some value in terms of uh, what we've had to go through and uh, why we chose .NET Nuke and how it's uh, benefited us. So uh, a little bit about who we are. Um, we're a regional health authority in, uh, and you can go to next slide, sorry, Mitch. Um, the uh, Regional Health Authority, and there are six of them in British Columbia, so they divide the province up, uh, Vancouver Island, Interior, Vancouver Coastal, Fraser Valley, and, and uh, Northern Health, as well as the Provincial Health Services Authority, which covers the entire province and delivers services such as BC Ambulance, renal services, and cancer care, et cetera. So we cover about two-thirds of the province. We're the largest geographically, but the smallest in terms of the, the number of people that live in our community. So many, many hospitals, so over two dozen, as well as residential care homes. And the nature of our programs is uh, almost anything you could uh, lump into what you would consider health. So there are things such as uh, the public health aspect that we provide. We're responsible for the acute care hospitals, primary care, and, uh, and physician complement. Um, Aboriginal health, environmental health, licensing and protection and things of that nature. So through the government we receive funding and we provide those services uh, in the north. Uh, many of our communities are remote and uh, that's one of the challenges which is why the web and technology are, 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 are essential for our, our ability to deliver services um, and provide information to the stakeholders in our region. Um, next slide. Um, a little bit of a, a good collage of what we can expect. Of course, you know everybody's a hockey fan up here in Canada. Mind you, I'm not a Canuck fan, so so I'm not partial to that photo. But uh, one of the challenges we have, and I think this photo illustrates, is that uh, there are communities that are 500 kilometers from another community. So in terms of providing service to those communities, we really have to be strategic in terms of how we provide resources and how we integrate technology and other services and tele teleservices to uh, to support those particular uh, communities and the stakeholders within them. So the web is essential for us to provide that information that they're seeking, as well as access to information and uh, um, experts to uh, to address some of their questions and concerns. So if we go to our challenges, um, to put it in perspective, our area is the size of France, less than one person per square mile. Um, so it's a challenge. We have three separate regions within our uh, our own uh, uh, health authority. There's the uh, the Northern Interior, which is the largest center and and uh, almost two thirds of the population. And Prince George is the largest community there, of about a hundred thousand in the surrounding in the community in the surrounding area. It's also our largest hospital. The Northeast, which is on the other side of the Rocky Mountains and borders the Yukon and Alberta, has a has probably about seventy or eighty thousand. It's very big in the oil and gas, um, so certainly a lot of camps, a lot of issues around that type of uh, uh, health healthcare service that we need to provide. And then the Northwest, which is along the coast and includes Haida Gwaii, which is a, a fairly challenging um, location to access. And there's northern communities that are uh, either a plane ride or a day's car ride to, to access. So certainly the system, again, it, it, it illustrates the challenges we have to address in, in making sure that we're connected. Um, we, have a, we have a broad range of care programs. So we're not just hospitals with public health, uh, a lot of health promotions work that we need to do. We're, we're the agency that uh, is, is tasked with, uh, with uh, trying to improve health outcomes, health outcomes, pardon me. So, so getting information and connecting with our stakeholders at a grassroots level is critical because uh, to affect that change, we need to ensure that we're engaged with those individuals and those other community groups uh, to, to, to do that type of work. Um, our site at the time, when, when I arrived about four years ago and we started to explore this, was, was very much a corporate site. It, it, it told you who your, who your board was, who your executive was, but all of that information that really didn't matter to our stakeholders and our populations, maybe just managed, mattered to our executive and, and perhaps even the government, but was not, was not an effective website or a tool for our, uh, for our organization. The site was also designed and the platform that we had required um, expensive software downloads if we wanted to empower individuals to be to participate from a content perspective and that was a challenge as well because we, we, we weren't sustainable in managing that we weren't able to keep the content vibrant or we weren't and we weren't able to to grow our website it was very very restrictive um, and we were finding that our website just wasn't effective and being that it was our first point of contact for a large uh, group of stakeholders well most of our residents 
um, we had some real problems there as we entered into this exercise. So having, having understood where our limitations were, we, we spent a lot of time looking at what did we need to ensure that we could be successful going forward. And some of the requirements that we, uh, that we, uh, that we had, and this isn't, certainly isn't exhaustive, but it, it gives you a bit of a sense. It has to be web-based. We couldn't, we, we couldn't um, continually pay for software and, and install the software. Our, our IT services couldn't support that. The geography made that very, very difficult. We had to be web-based in terms of what, what is it that we could use that people could still access, become content providers, um, but, was, uh, but was affordable as well. Uh, multiple portals. We had to have something that we could build off of so that it wasn't solely uh, a corporate website but also allowed us to look at the health promotions work that we do and ensure that we could build pieces off of our web that were still branded and still part of the Northern Health Core website but were specific to the action that we uh, we wanted to take. We, we did a lot of work around secondary branding in that um, being the sole provider of uh, health in the North, um, our brand is more important from a credibility standpoint than it is from a competitive standpoint. So we had to ensure that whatever people were getting to, um, our brand was present in the sense that it was quality and appropriate information, but not that it was the uh, thrust of what we were trying to get out because at the end of the day, it was uh, about affecting change in a lot of this work. And if we did it or somebody else did it, it wasn't the important piece. It was that they were getting quality information and that was the, the key in that. Had to be easy. Um, we have uh, a limited capacity, and, and particularly when you're empowering other people to become some of your content providers, we had to make we had to find a platform that was easy for people to use, that wasn't overly complex, that we, we didn't have the time, the staff, or the resources to continually train people and bring them up to date in ter in, in technical aspects of web design, um, Dreamweaver, and things like that. We had to keep it as simple as possible, and and that was a critical element as well because we needed the content experts to just focus on the content, not the design. Um, so intimidation was, was, was a problem uh, in the technology we had before and certainly couldn't be going forward. Uh, flexible permissions. Uh, this is really interesting because, you know, and, and I'll talk a little bit more about where we think we can go with flexible permissions, but once you start opening your ability to provide content to a broader net of people, we had to ensure that we had the permissions in place to uh, provide to protect the organization, ensure the content was both vibrant and of a quality that was acceptable to the organization. Uh, technical support was critical. Our resources were limited. In fact, when we went through the, the project, um, we took it outside of our IT department. We have since brought it back in on our platform, um, but we felt that we needed to go outside to ensure that we had the technical support available and then we'll bring our internal capacity up to a certain standard, but still accessing that outside support where required. Another one was local development uh, developers. Being a publicly funded organization, it's, it's critical for us to ensure that uh, in anything that we do, that we use as many local uh, uh, suppliers and uh, firms in, in just about anything we do in the web, no different. Um, we had to have a platform that was, was accessible, um, but that was easy, it was easy enough for us to find developers that could uh, dip into our system, provide us some value add, do some work for us, um, without uh, significant cost or us or us required to uh, carry carry the cost of a proprietary technology and the support that that requires. And then affordable. Um, one of the big pushes with uh, uh, any public health organization is, and particularly health, is we need to ensure that uh, the bulk of our resources are going into patient care. Um, and any resources redirected away from patient care have to be very, very highly justified um, and certainly well thought out because that's uh, forever, forever a political debate uh, as, uh, uh, as health can be, you know, is, is very expensive and, it, and it's certainly not where people want to see the resources go. But there is a recognition that we have a role to provide that type of information. Um, so in terms of uh, the decision, when we looked around um, and we evaluated uh, all of our factors and, uh, and the things that we need, .NET Nuke was was very clearly early on a front runner for us. Um, we did get some advice from Alberta, Alberta Health Services. Uh, some of the health authorities there had gone to .NET Nuke with uh, incredible success. They were very pleased with what they've done. Now that that has since changed because Alberta has gone from regional health authorities similar to BC to one large health authority for the province. Um, but they had quite good success with that. So. That was, uh, uh, in, in essence, a bit of a tipping point is knowing that they had a strong relationship 
with DNN and the company that they used to implement it, um, which was LexCore out of Calgary, and we piggybacked off that work and uh, started to move this project forward. Um, so in terms of the, the scope, we were rebuilding the web. We had a very, very poor website. It was very ineffective, and we didn't put a lot of work in it uh, from the day that I got here. We started that process of looking at a redesign. We didn't do as much work up front as we would have liked to do because we, we knew we were at a point in our, in our evolution as an organization that we needed to uh, ensure we had something up that was functional. We had a lot of information about how we interacted with our stakeholders. We knew that they tend to navigate the health system by their community, by their health need, by their uh, disease or issue, by, or by the, the facility that they, they have an affiliation with, which would be usually their local hospital. So we, we tended to build around what we knew about our stakeholders and what we could gather from information from other health authorities across the, the, the country to, to build a framework that says, how do we redesign this so that we're engaging with our, our community members better so that we can provide them the information they need in a manner that they're going to access it, as well as building the redundancies in. So not knowing um, how they'll get there, but knowing that they will choose one of four or five different pathways to get the information that they're looking for. So we worked with Lexicor, a company that had a very good track record with uh, the Alberta Health Authorities and, and other organizations around .NET Nuke, um, had very aggressive timelines. We knew what we wanted um, fairly early. We knew we had to build it early. Um, we knew we didn't have all the content, but we knew we needed something up very, very quickly. So in about a six-month process, um, we worked with Lexicor and a small team of about three people um, and planned, designed, developed, and launched the site in uh, June 2010. Uh, it's what I would consider a work in progress. We've, we've received a lot of positive feedback from many of our stakeholders. There are gaps in that website that we're quite well aware of, um, but we knew we had to get to a point where uh, we could provide the information in a manner that our that, are, uh, that the, the people in our communities could gather and use this at a bit, as a bit of a jumping off point for the next evolution. And if you, you look in the slides, we have a few examples in here. So uh, our landing page or our home page um, is built around uh, a bit of a key structure, our services, health, careers, which is very important for us because recruitment uh, into northern communities for positions and specialist positions can be a challenge. Um, we needed to focus on that. Uh, a little bit of information about us, news and uh, news and events, and contact us. But I think some of the important pieces on this is we tried to add a multimedia element, which DNN was very flexible in allowing us to do, as well as a vibrant uh, news type of source where we could provide news releases as well as feature articles and information. It became more of an engagement strategy with our community so that we weren't just saying, come here and try and find some information. We're going to tell you a little bit about what we're doing. We're going to try and keep it as vibrant as we can and ensure that you're going to get access to, to what you need, plus hopefully a little bit more than what you need. Um, we've, we've used some of the elements uh, uh, in terms of pop-up maps, um, some of the features that allow us to connect people to the communities very specifically. It's one of the areas we actually need to do a lot of work in. And as we talk about where we're going in the future, one of the critical elements we've noticed is that uh, people in Dees Lake, for example, that's the first point of contact that they're going to have with Northern Health, is they're going to want to know what services are available in Dees Lake. Less so specific services and more the what do you have here so that I know what the state of affairs is. And that, that speaks for current residents, but also people considering moving to some of these communities, as well as when we look at some of the mining and oil and gas operations that are starting to develop, they, they, they need to get a sense of what are the services available in, in these communities because at the end of the day when they have work camps, they need to know what they need to support in the work camps versus what the community can support. Um, we also created subsites and microsites off of this, and this is important. And the Northern Cancer Control Strategy is a good example. We have to build in, you know, a, a, a consistent brand. We built it on the DNN platform, but interestingly enough, the Northern Cancer Control Strategy is is, is actually driven by the BC Cancer Agency, which is a subset of the Provincial Health Services Authority. So it's not actually owned by Northern Health, but because our platform was so strong and so vibrant, it allowed other agencies to build off our platform. We house it. Um, it is a partnership that we're part of uh, between the uh, three health authorities. And we could build these types of things very, very quickly with local resources off of our website, maintain some consistency in, in, in brand and structure and movement through the website. 
um, but still add a functional element and something that's separate from our organization in that it's critical uh, um, for that particular agency and around the Northern Cancer Control Strategy. Another example would be the next slide, which would be the Northern BC Man Challenge. One of the initiatives we really pushed, oh, sorry, uh, I jumped ahead. We've got the Community Health Information Portal. This is, uh, this is a tool that uh, our research department has put together. And what essentially it is, and, and there's nothing like it actually in Western Canada, uh, and arguably Canada, and, and essentially it's not new information, but what our, our research department has done is pulled together all of the uh, various statistical and, and report information that's available across the country and, and in some cases beyond categorized it, um, put it into place through a link-based format so that people can access based on what their needs are, their concerns are, their questions are, their issues are. They can actually access information um, based on whatever they're looking for. It's not our information, so we're not required to maintain or update short of the links. We're accessing all of the information that's available through, uh, through other networks so that people can go to a one-stop shop. This site has been very successful, not only for researchers, uh, community members, politicians as they do their health planning for their community. Um, but we've had other agencies start to send us information because it's become a very effective place for them to, to pop populate so that they can ensure people are accessing their information in a manner. We, we, we allow people to come to one space instead of going and hunting and pecking through the web or through different agencies for whatever information they're, they happen to be looking for. We do add some of our own content which is uh, health indicators for communities. We do comprehensive health, in health indicators and health, health and community health profiles. Those are available in there, which are also snapshots about the community, talks about um, any health indicator that you might want to consider so that the community can get a sense of their demographics, uh, their, their death rates, anything that they need to know to help with their planning, as well as corporations as we look to the investment from the resource sector. The, the next slide, is uh, probably one of our strongest examples of how we've tried to incorporate some brand in, but also recognize that the brand is secondary to what we're trying to do. Um, in northern BC and, and, and in many rural communities, men's health is a, is a big issue because men simply don't access health. Um, it's the macho attitude and, uh, and the death rates are higher in the north for, for a variety of reasons. Um, so there, through a community consultation last year, one of the things that came out was to actually create a strategy to improve men's health, which means going to where the, men's are, to where the men are, which are industrial settings to do screenings and things of that nature, but also to create resources that are relevant for men, interesting to men, and that they can become engaged and provide, provide, uh, provide input and feedback in that. So for example, ask the, the medical health officer, ask Dr. B, um, submit resumes, get active, people can submit maps fishing and things like that, hiking trails, things like that, uh, put their stories in, but really start to engage. And we've been very successful in this. But I think the key from the from the web element is we could contract locally for this. It was a separate side project working with our webmaster as the project lead. We could design and build this site, and we did, within about six to eight weeks. We could pull all the information, build the site, have it go up and have it go live and start becoming and start becoming an active contributor to the uh, to the men's health strategy as we do the outreach that we're trying to do and ensure that we're providing an avenue for people to come in and access additional information. We're seeing more of this type of thing and in fact as we talk about some of the future pieces I'll get into where this, this, this type of site is going to become a centerpiece of our web as we move forward and as we've gathered information about our websites. So in terms of the results at this point um, we have greater public accessibility. Our, our, our stakeholders in our community, the feedback we've been getting from the, uh, a lot of the public advisory groups, and, and, and for perspective, many of our communities have health committees, health advisory committees that are made up of stakeholders in the community, municip uh, municipal politicians, things of that nature. So we certainly get a lot of feedback about what works and what doesn't, not just about the web, but anything in general. And, and the feedback on the web has been very, very good. Um, as well as some ideas in terms of where we need to take it. And an example of that that, uh, that, is, that is up and coming is the, one of our local communities is so engaged in their, uh, in, in their health resources that we are actually going to be piloting, uh, providing them access to our web as content providers. Um, so so make, I guess partnering with the community, holding them accountable 
for the health information that's available in their community and the resources that are there. So we're in the early stages of that. The community is very, very excited, and we're very excited because now um, we have a partnership, a shared responsibility to ensure that that, uh, that that health information that they're seeking and that they want the residents of that community to have is not just our issue, it's, it's a community issue. So it's, it's a very exciting initiative and, and, and something we could not do without DNN because of the permission uh, uh, pieces that we have in place. So, so we're certainly excited about that. The expanded content contrib con contribution, we've, we've uh, exponentially increased the number of contributors because we don't have to buy software, we don't have to install it, we don't have to do uh, the extensive training that's required around that. So our contributors are up almost close to three figures in terms of uh, the numbers of contributors that we have. Uh, and that allows us to maintain and ensure that we're having vibrant content. So that when you go to a web page, and it could be something as simple as radon awareness or uh, or uh, tobacco cessation campaigns, they can continually put vibrant, up-to-date information up, up-to-date links. There's a multimedia element, and we don't have to be a roadblock in that process. We've allowed, we've enabled them. We still have the permission space so we can protect our organization. But now they're they're active contributors and. Uh, and we're seeing a lot more vibrancy in our site, particularly around our content, which is which is great. This also means we have uh, uh, faster changes. We can we can turn changes around to our site very quickly with our internal capacity. And if we need to build sites for particular initiatives, or for example, something as simple as we had, uh, uh, for example, uh, a mill explosion, we need to put something up very quickly uh, to deal with that emergency and the code orange response to that. We're we're uh, we're in a position where we can respond very very fast, have a site up, have the information there, and that's critical in our community um, to ensuring that people are getting information very very fast. Doesn't have to be fancy, but we know that you know emergency situation we need to provide that information. We have the capacity to do that through DNN that we didn't before. Um, uh, I'm not going to continue to go down the results. Um, we're we're pleased that it's low cost, which is a, is another big issue, and I think probably one of the uh, the critical elements. The cost of the implementation and the support of this is a fraction of what it was costing us to to work through our own IT system and the platform that we had, and that's that's a great message for me uh, on the public relations side, and that we can say our web is better, it's stronger, it's more vibrant, and it costs a fraction of what it used to, and from and that means we're putting that money back into uh, right into patient care, and that makes our communities happy, that makes the government happy, and that makes uh, the residents happy, knowing that they have better service coming at a lower cost, um, and that that service is being provided to direct patient care, which ultimately is our goal and is our mandate. So we always have to keep that in mind. So so I've kind of run through this very, very quickly. I wanted to make sure that you had lots of time for questions, if there are any. Um, um, we've been uh, very pleased with the exercise uh, working with DNN, and uh, we are actually at that stage now where we will be building our web around um, things such as our, our stakeholders better. So you'll be seeing more uh, more sites such as the Northern BC Man Challenge as we recognize um, we need to drive people to our web through the through the through where their affiliation is and wrap the services around their needs as opposed to simply driving them through the web in its current format. So we're going through that work right now. Um, we're excited because DNN will continue to be the platform that allows us and enables us to do that type of work and ensure that that, that we're wrapping the web around the individual as opposed to the other way around. So thank you very much. Hey, Steve, that was a great story. Thank you. Um, I appreciate you running through it. We've got a bunch of questions, actually, and um, maybe a couple of topics. Um, to touch on that would answer some of these, but uh, what are your future plans for uh, the websites and the portals? Are you guys, have you done anything with mobile? Um, I noticed you're making use of video, and the world seems to be going more strongly to video. Um, any future plans that you can talk about? Absolutely. We are, we're, we're exploring a, a mobile app. Um, we, there are others, and we, because we're part of a larger, system, larger government system, there are apps such as the 811 uh, HealthLink BC app, which has maps and vibrant information. So we're looking at piggybacking on that and linking to our app. 
Um, we're looking at a responsive design for the web in the future, uh, recognizing that more people are accessing through mobile apps, iPads, things of that nature. So certainly exploring that. Multimedia is something we've spent a lot of time focusing on. One of the challenges we have is we have a lot of people that access the web but have a very low literacy level despite that. So, so multimedia and video is absolutely an integral component um, to some of the work we do. And we've really been expanding some of those areas. And then the other piece is, as we look at the redesign, we really need to understand, and we've gotten lots of information over the three years. And again, the website enabled us to do that, because we've looked at how people have navigated our web. We've followed how they've moved through it in its current format. And we have a better sense, uh, when we're, and we're doing some usability testing, but we have a better sense of how we need to wrap our web around the individual based on what their needs are and how they navigate the system. Uh, it, it's a big push because, you know, really you're telling the corporate side of the house that people don't really care who your executive team are when they're trying to find out information about diabetes or, or radon or whatever they're looking for. So, so it's a tough sell from a corporate perspective, but it's, it's the way we need to evolve our web to ensure that, you know, uh, the average person on the street when they get to our web is getting relevant information very quickly and, and that's the next iteration of the exercise we're actually starting now. Cool. Uh, related to future plans, we're getting a couple of questions here from the audience about uh, the topic of EMRs and um, health information exchange. Um, any plans to open up the site for direct patient access to EMRs? You know that's that's interesting. That's and, and that's being driven provincially in, in terms of that information. So at this point, no. I know that there is a, you know the government's really looking at how how they can enable people to get access to their own information in a better way. Um, so at this point, yeah, I think we're still a ways away from that. We certainly want to keep. We we do want to be aware that this this is somewhere where we're where 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 the world's starting to go is is that empowerment around patient information and their ability to have it, but. Obviously, security around that is is critical in that process as well. So I, I would say we're early on in that discussion, but we're going to be we're certainly going to be aware that 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 could be a development in the future for us. Got it. So where do you stand right now in terms of the number of content owners? How many content owners um, update the site, and how did you get those guys trained? Uh, we're almost to seventy five. Um, we have. Uh, we have limited resources, and this is going to become a, a, a challenge moving forward. We know this um, is is as you become successful, and as people are, are recognizing the web is a powerful tool for their particular program, they want to participate. And and we have one webmaster, and then we have uh, some consulting resources that we can bring in. So so we're getting close to hitting our capacity in terms of ensuring that we're training and developing the, the content providers. So that's something we're going to be looking at, how we do that. Um, the number is great. I mean, we were at uh, 25 in the past, and so, so essentially we've tripled um, our content providers. But it, it is growing, and, and it's a bit of an area of concern for us as we're successful in the web development. My hope is, as we look at the next iteration and where we're trying to drive this, um, We'll be reducing the number of web pages we have, we think, because we're going to eliminate some of the things that just uh, it's, it's just not important to our consumers, or it doesn't need to be vibrant because it's quite static information, and that may change the uh, the number of content providers. But we don't know that yet. But it, but it's certainly one of the risks that we've identified going forward is that that our capacity internally to support this now is is is, is getting to be a challenge. Not not on the the DNN side or the web side, simply on a success side. Cool. We're getting a couple of project-related questions about the project. Um, how many people were involved in the project in addition to the three or four from your team, or from the okay. you know from Northern Health team? We had uh, there were two people from IT. Uh, uh, there were the three or four various times from from the communication side and the webmaster side. And there were two, three from Lexicorp. So it was a fairly small site team on, on, on all the ends. And, 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 to, to, and I, I probably shouldn't say it. critically in this, there were four. There was a webmaster, there was a communications lead, there was an IT lead, and then there was a Lexicorp lead. And they were the core four that drove this project through in its initial stages. 
you know, we'll grab that we didn't do as much stakeholder analysis. We did base it on information that we currently had um, and some anecdotal information when we went through this, this, the first iteration. But as we look at this next development, and since we've gone live, we've gathered information, we've done some usability testing, we've, uh, we've done some work with different stakeholder groups and community groups, so we feel we're much better prepared uh, in terms of understanding how people navigate as we move towards the second one. So, so admitted, admittedly, our, our initial structure was a bit of a, you know, a bit of a wing and a prayer in the sense that we had to base it on what we had without real structure behind the uh, research part of that. That being said, um, we were quite pleased because we had enough anecdotal information and resources available that uh, we were happy with where we landed at the first stage. And knowing that, uh, you know, our first website was very, very bad. We had to get there in a quick manner. Got it. And um, another project-related question. Uh, did you end up uh, developing your own custom modules, or did you buy modules from the store? I mean, how did you extend .NET New to where you needed it to be? I'm going to introduce uh, Rosemary Dolman just to answer that question specifically, because she can talk about the specifics in uh, in what we've done in terms of buying and purchasing. So I'm going to just bring her forward here to, to just answer that question. Hi. Um, we have purchased modules, and also Lexicore has developed custom modules for us to um, answer specific needs that the website has had. Okay. Um, Steve, earlier you talked about um, the tension uh, in, and I think this is a conversation that's happening in every healthcare organization about the uh, investments made in preventative programs versus, you know, after the fact um, disease management and, and so on. How does the, the website factor into this discussion from Northern Health's point of view? Well, it, it's quite significant, and, and it's a big change in terms of culture for organization and one of our, our critical uh, strategies. We have four strategies as an organization. Integrated accessible health services, of which the web plays a role. A focus on our people, which is, uh, which is around the recruitment and retention of our staff. A population health approach, which is really the upstream work that we need to do. And then high quality services. And, and so one of our key elements is the population health pro approach and the, and the health promotions that we do that are associated with that. We know that the acute system is is getting stretched because we, and particularly in the north, we don't have healthy people. They don't eat well, um, they work uh, shift work, and uh, there's, you know, the, the factors are endless that, and that, there, that there's a burden on our, our system and if we don't do the work up front around tobacco cessation, healthy eating, healthy uh, active lifestyles, those types of things, the burden is going to continue on the acute system at the at the back end, and of course affect everything down the line. So it is a critical element in our strategy, and we recognize that. What's happened and didn't happen in the past is communications and the health promotion side, which is is, is has has been fairly has been fairly isolated in terms of the work that they do. We we formed quite a tight partnership now, where we provide the advice and guidance around the communications and the marketing side, which includes the web. They provide the content, and we work together on strategies to move some of these initiatives forward. Men's Health being one of the best examples of where we brought all the players together. We sat down. We've developed a strategy that that includes not only a website but also outreach to uh, to where men are, to uh, work camps and and mills and things like that to begin the health screening, to begin those health conversations. So uh, various promotional materials that are supporting that, that are that are appealing to that audience, et cetera, et cetera. They go to hockey games, for example, and do screenings in the beer gardens. As, as funny as that sounds, it's been one of it's been an incredibly effective tool to engage with men and actually get them screened and tell them you have high blood pressure. Never would have done it if they weren't there. So it's that combination approach that we've started to do. Now the challenge we have is, of course, as the acute system becomes more and more expensive because it's it's under more and more pressure, it's difficult to ensure that you have the resources to support not only the web but other health promotions because it's not going into direct patient care. So we know that it's important, we know that it's essential to reducing the uh, 
the cost on the acute care system if we're doing a good job, yet it's taking resources out of the acute system to do it. So it is a very delicate balance. Um, we, we do work very hard to find efficiencies. And again, this is where .NET Nuke has been a real find for us, is we can build websites such as the Northern BC Man, Man Challenge for very, very inexpensively. And in the past, we could. And, and when I say inexpensively, a fraction of the cost that we used to build our websites for. So that's enabled us to, to, to start down that path. And we're working on a number of others as we speak, uh, particularly around HIV awareness and point of care testing and things of that nature that we expect to launch in the next little while that are built exactly like the Northern BC Man Challenge, very inexpensively, very vibrant, built with our partners in mind and with stakeholder involvement um, that we can launch and support the other pieces of the campaign very effectively and, 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 and inexpensively, which ultimately nowadays, as the pressure on health care is uh, continuing to, to become a challenge, um, we have to. We're, we're obligated to find those opportunities. And, and you know, DNN has provided us a, a great avenue to do that from a web perspective. We have challenges in other areas, but certainly the, the web is one of the places that we consider real success in providing better support, better service, providing more information, and, and doing it at a less cost. Great. Um, another question about uh, your your sites. Um, what about um, W3C compliance and accessibility standards? Um, how did you how do you guys handle those? I'll let Rosemary's done some work in there, so I'll let her respond to that. Hi. Uh, we will definitely be um, doing our best to you know um, adhere to the W3C standards, and especially as we move forward and develop. A new site. We will be upgrading to the new version of DNN um, six shortly, and I think from what I've seen so far, um, it looks great to be. Um, you know, it looks like a great platform to work on as far as standards-based design um, goes. Hey, hey, Rosemary. While we have you on the line, there's another couple of technical questions that are getting asked by the audience. Um, okay. Given your pro Given your project timeline, it looks like you started with .NET New version 5. Have you, mer have you um, updated to .NET New version 6? No, we're just in the process. We've had some internal um, changes to our um, infrastructure with servers and databases. So we're just in the process of getting that finished. And then I would say probably within the next few months, we will be upgrading to DNM6. Cool. And the other technical question that's getting asked is about localization. Um, do you have any plans to localize your site? Um, I know that in Canada, it, there, there are two languages that needed to get supported officially, you know, English and French. Um, and what are your plans with regards to localization? Here, just a sec. I'll give you back to Steve. OK. One of the. Uh, yeah, I, I, we do have two official languages in Canada. We do have a very, very small French-speaking population in, in the western side, although there is some. Uh, our bigger challenge and something we haven't tackled, although we've started to explore this as a corporation, not as uh, not just in terms of the, the web, is First Nations. We, we do have a number of First Nations languages. Um, we have challenges around transcription, and we need to find a way to incorporate that into our website. So it is part of our thinking. It's early stages. Um, but the expertise is limited for us to access and build that type of content into our site. So, so we're aware of it, but currently at this point, we're, uh, we have no plans to move in that direction right away. And um, just to put the .NET Nuke um, on answer to that, uh, the .NET Nuke uh, platform is uh, fully local, localizable. Uh, today, there are language packs that are offered for many different languages. Uh, through our website and through uh, the Extension Forge, which is the uh, open source uh, um, repository for projects. Uh, with the .NET Nuke 6.2 release, which is coming out at the end of this month, we've actually taken it a whole, to a whole new level, and we've created a, um, an end-to-end -end localized experience in, in um, five or now six native languages, um, so English, uh, Spanish, German, French, um, Dutch, and Italian. So um, up till now, you had to install the English version 
um, and then install a language pack to localize. Um, and these localizations weren't officially supported because they came from the community. Uh, with at the 6.2 release at the end of this month, there will be a full end-to-end -end install and usage experience in a native language that's fully supported by, by DNN Corp. Um, and Steve, um, another um, thought that came to mind, you mentioned earlier uh, something that uh, caught my attention. I thought it was pretty interesting. And uh, because of Canada's uh, healthcare model, it's not necessarily a competitive model like here in the States, but uh, you do have to worry about brand credibility. And you use the term brand credibility, and what occurred to me is um, a question around how does Northern Health measure that? Yeah, um, and that's, that's a good question because we haven't done a lot of work around measuring that because, in, in fact, we are a, we are a monopoly. Um, in northern BC and the health healthcare system is government funded. So we aren't competing with any other organization in northern BC for the work that we do. We're, we're considered the service that provides it and that's it. Um, what we need to measure is the quality, we do need to measure what the quality is behind that because essentially we're making some assumptions that uh, that if we are the agency that's providing this information that people are assuming that it's quality information and that might not be true. Um, so we do need to work around that particular piece. Uh, so I don't have an easy answer for you on that, except to say that we do know that uh, at the end of the day, uh, if people are, for example, stopping smoking or they're they're eating better or it's healthy choices, it it doesn't matter if it came from us or it came from anybody else. So we really had to push the lens around, and our public health folk have been very helpful in in, in moving that this organization into that mindset in that if the community takes a role on it and we, we provide information to a community website around that type, whatever particular topic it is, and it's having an effect, that's a good thing. It's the result that we're really trying to get at where we where we think the brand is important is there's a lot of information about dieting and healthy eating and things like that. Um, some of it's bad information and not healthy information. What we're hoping, and we, again, we don't have a, a measurable on this, is that when they see the Northern Health logo and the Northern Health brand associated with the web, there's a credibility and an understanding that the information that they're getting is quality, it is safe, and it is accurate and up to date. And that's where our brand becomes important from a consumer perspective, less so than that they know that they're in a Northern Health site. We just want them to be aware that whatever they're getting is appropriate information. And that's where our partnership with communities and, and our work with public health is important. So. In terms of measuring it, though, we're still early stages in that, and uh, unfortunately, probably a ways away. Got it. Um, we got a next question from the audience about you. You had mentioned uh, uh, video. We, I'd asked you a question about video, um, and the question is from the audience is: Are you using a content distribution network to manage and embed video on your sites? No, not at this time. So the, the vid video is stored uh, uh, YouTube. locally. Locally in YouTube. Oh, yeah. oh, YouTube. Okay, got it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you just play the video through a, a frame on on your .NET site. Yeah, that's what we're doing right now. Now that's not to say we're not going to look at that as we rebuild the website, but we found that to be a very inexpensive, effective channel for us to distribute that information and ensure people are accessing it. Well, great. Um, we are getting to the top of the hour, so I wanted to thank you very much, Steve and uh, Rosemary, for filling in as well. Um, really cool story. Uh, love the uh, the details that you provided and the color behind the, the story as well. So I appreciate your time. Thank you, everybody that's uh, logged in and uh, listened, and um, we'll see you next time for another uh, .NET New Quest seminar. Have a great day. If I, could, you know, if I could say one more thing, Mitch. Sure. I just want to let people know that if they do have questions and they and they want to uh, get a little bit more additional information, I know you put my email up there. I just wanted to ensure that uh, I'm we'll be more than happy to try and respond. And if people wanted a longer conversation about a particular area, we'd, we'd certainly be open to having that with them. No worries. And and Steve, uh, for the next web seminar, I'm going to send you a pair of cool sunglasses that you can use in your photo. Yeah, I, I noticed that. Yeah, I, I look a little uh, uptight compared to you. <laughs> No worries. Thanks, Thanks so much.
Cheers. All right, thanks, everybody.